board. Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 103 with the Struggling Hunters. Um, the Struggling Hunters. And, uh, you know, we appreciate you um, turning into the Struggling Hunters because we we are the struggling hunters and there's no one else that's like us. And I got Eric sitting over on the other side of the screen from me. And then, uh, Hey everybody. <laughs> you got, uh, Joe. That's, that's what I go by AKA the big show every once in a while. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, we thank you for tuning, tuning in and, uh, listen, giving us your time and, uh, your attention for the next, hope this one maybe about 20 minutes and uh not not too much to talk about got some things to talk about uh as far as you know my side of things moving into our house when this airs we'll be into our new home so our background my background will change again and uh and then it'll probably also change because me and eric will be within two miles of each other so um who knows we might meet in the middle somewhere and just sit down and do a podcast <laughs> yeah you never know I mean, we could probably do that right <laughs> yeah. but uh yeah so uh we're excited about that some more changes to come and hopefully some better content for you guys and uh also on top of that tonight we're just going to be discussing a little bit of uh i guess the turkey season and with that too being that I'm in Colorado now, I don't, you know, I don't have a turkey tag. Um, I was going to try to get one for Utah, but with the way moving and stuff has gone, uh, I don't know that I will have a turkey tag this year. I'll just just go find one for Eric and tie it up to a tree for him. And uh, <laughs> I'll just yeah. kidding. Just kidding. Well, I, need, just, need the, I, I need all the help I can get. Uh, I will be helping, but I don't know about tying it to a tree. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to the help because, uh, um, yeah, it'll be nice. I've definitely, definitely had my struggles with Turkey on the last few years. So it'll be nice to have Joe, uh, coming along and helping me. Uh, you no, know, that'd be, that's kind of like an interesting or different too. Like in a way, it's kind of nice i don't have the the stress of getting something you know like i can just more or less come along for the ride and text or call you if i see something if we're not together you know or we can split up and you know or or what however that may look like but you know i don't have to fill a tag so i'm not trying to <laughs> be stressed i can go at it with probably a little bit different of an attitude than being the one carrying the gun yeah well, I, yeah, that's true. I, I can imagine it's, it's nice to just be out there enjoying yourself and learning the land than trying to also bring some home. Right. Fill the old tag. Right. Yeah. So I guess with that too, I guess when this does air, it will be in Colorado. The season will have already started. Yep. So yeah. I'm 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 hoping to to get it. So I think kind of the plan is is uh, I am going to be doing some kind of hunt for opener weekend. I'm not a hundred percent sure if I'm even going to make it out on opener day. I'm hoping I do. I'm hoping that I can in the morning, but I'm not a hundred percent sure if I will. Uh, but Joe and I were talking a little bit before we hit record on the on the podcast here and. I think kind of the plan is, is once he gets settled in and stuff, we'll, we'll start kind of focusing on hitting it a little harder together and, and going that route. It's been a, it's been a crazy start to 2020, 2022. So um, yeah, I, I feel a little unprepared. So I feel like the first couple weekends, I'm going to mostly kind of have the mindset of just trying to scout and figure out, my right positions if something cut you know obviously if something comes along i'm not gonna be I'm not gonna turn my nose up to it necessarily but um but yeah i just kind of get my legs underneath me and figure out what what i want to do and and um in probably um 
May, the last month of turkey season, I'll get a little more serious with it. Joe will be hopefully unpacked by then, or at least mostly unpacked. Yeah. To where at least, can, well, uh, <laughs> have, a, ha- have a weekend or two to go out with me and, and right. home with me. So, yeah, correct. Where I'm not so focused on getting the house situated. But yeah. Um, well, that's the thing too, is, is I'll probably be helping you at least unload the, right. The stuff and probably or help you moving in the bigger stuff, I'm sure. So, right. So yeah, it'll probably be a little, little crazy for, for the next few weekends. And, but anyway, yeah, we'll get it figured out. Well, that's like, I'm excited thing. though for the Turkey season. Oh yeah. Sorry, me too. Joe, go ahead. No, you're yeah. fine. I just was, you know, doing some, uh, as I've driven back, back, not that I've done it a lot, but the handful of times I've been between, I, well, I guess Fruta and Grand Junction, I, not that, you know, it's a bunch of private property through there, but, um, there are some areas that kind of looked like little Turkey habitat that, uh, I kind of want to just see if, you know, start locating some and then maybe gaining permission or whatnot. I don't know what that'll exact, exactly look like, but that's kind of, you know, my game plan more or less is just trying to, and I think what it boils down to is they, they don't like to be too far from water. And then, um, yeah, I don't know. I will say a hillside because that's where, <laughs> where I shot mine was on a hillside. And that's where all I've ever seen turkeys in Utah was on hillsides. So <laughs> I don't, I don't know, but yeah, you might be onto something there. But it's going to be kind of that's what I'm just looking forward to is just spending some time, just more or less scouting for the next for the next little bit, and, and then the next month, I guess, and then month month after that, hopefully, be able to really pursue them pretty hard. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I'm I'm thinking that uh thinking that that's probably the way it's gonna go down. Like I said, if something if, if I'm I'm not gonna sit there and be picky by any means. If something happens to go down, I'm gonna I'm gonna take my opportunities, but right. Uh yeah, just trying to find my biggest my biggest um one of my biggest struggles lately or the last couple of years starting turkey hunting is trying to trying to look at look at like you said uh earlier you kind of alluded to is uh trying to find the public land where they're actually at you know because i've uh i've went turkey hunting up on public not seeing a thing but then like you know drive down going toward town and seeing them like right in a field or something you know where i can't hunt i'm like ah what is this you know so right it's been it's been it's been kind of yeah but it's been fun trying to figure them out and i think that's the appeal to turkey hunt you know a lot of people and and i used to be one of them so i i know a lot of people you know are like ah what's the big deal with turkey hunting but once i decided i'm like you know what i'm just gonna get a tag and try it uh it's been a lot harder than i than what meets the eye for sure Right. Well, that's like, it kind of goes along. I was going to, you know, like kind of bring up mentality, I guess, of hunting, you know, and like being how difficult it is to hunt or not. I shouldn't say difficult. It's kind of funny. Like you look at paper, it's really easy to hunt, you know, (laughs) more or less. You just got to be where they're at. Right. That's easy enough, but you got to find them first. (laughs) Yep. That's kind of a lot that goes into that. Well, and that's the thing too. Uh, I mean, you spot a turkey, you know, and you're like, well, I know I've seen one in this area and, you know, maybe the next year or whatever you go out there, or you could go out there the next weekend and right. this is almost all animals, but, um, you know, you go out and you could hunt all day, whether, whatever animal you're going for and never, never see what you saw a weekend before. Yeah, you hear that in a lot of podcasts actually about like uh, uh, people that deer hunt. Uh, 
you know, a lot of people, there's a lot of people that go out there and scout in the middle of summer and stuff. But then there's a lot of people that are like, I don't do that because that's what they're doing during summer. That they're, right. they're doing some complete, they might be in a whole nother area in the winter time or in by the time archery season comes or, right. or rifle or whatever their, whatever their choice. I'm s- scouting in July to, uh, I'm scouting in July to hunt in October. And those are two very different um, environment um, or climate changes and stuff happens a lot between those, those months. So that's going right, to affect, right. affect where they're going to be. Right. Yeah. Speaking of um, working out in the field, like I do, I've been driving out to, uh, to the area that I work and, uh the last few like probably the last three weeks it seems like they've kind of settled down actually this week and maybe even last week but the few weeks before that uh mill deer they were practically there's times of the season where i don't really see them at all and then there's times of this this last couple weekends ago they were uh jumping out in front of me practically on the road you know every around right. every corner almost they were jumping out and you know, you just, know just trying to get hit and i'm like man where are you guys during hunt season dang it you no know, it would be interesting i didn't really think we'd go that like this tangent not that it's quite a tangent but i just want to put it out there since it's a thought that came to mind um but everyone's always talking about uh the elevation of where the animals are right like you just said like last little bit that they were down they've been down and low on this on the roads and stuff early you know playing russian roulette with their lives but i kind of was sitting there thinking of like you know and i got a couple cameras but it'd be kind of fun to get like you know three or four cameras and just leave them on, on one spot for a year but have them at different elevations up a mountainside like within the same on the same mountain side but you know have it at like the base of the mountain and then midway or half mid halfway between midway and half and you know like three make it i guess four quarters up the mountain four different cameras up the mountain and then just leave them try to leave them there as long as possible and just kind of try to learn where where the animals are at i mean it's gonna i know it's gonna change every year where they're gonna be at that time of, you know like as they move it's gonna it's not the same day oh well, it's uh you know september 8th i'm gonna start it's time to move to this band of the mountain now you know it's i know weather and all that has to deal with it but it would be interesting to see you know roughly you know when those changes start to happen for the animals yeah i i get what you're saying i think uh i think it actually would be an, be a neat experiment to to do because I mean, you collect that data, you know, and right. Um, I mean, it'd be nice to do it for a couple of years and just see what, yeah. you, what, what you get, you know, and kind of get an idea. Like, like you said, like, Oh, July or what, you know, July, they're way up there and August or move down a little bit or whatever they do. Maybe they're still right. up there, but kind of, kind of get an idea when you start seeing them move down. I I mean yeah I think uh, I think all the data points you can get for that kind of stuff helps I mean you know it's a little harder if you're trying to go after a specific animal you know like a big buck or something like right you might see that buck all over in July and then not see him at all in September but but uh, just to get an idea like oh man it seems like there's a lot of traffic on this middle camera in september for some reason you know it'd be it'd be kind of a cool data point to kind of get it right. well and that's the other that's the other side of the whole thing that i was trying to say too is you'd get you get you just have an idea for for other areas other hunting Correct. areas in Correct. itself you'd be like well you know according to the data that i collected before deer deer elk whatever you're pursuing is like to kind of be around this this uh, this right. area or this level of a mountainside right and i mean think i think there's a lot that kind of goes into that you know like uh weather temperature 
moisture, uh, yeah, rainfall, all that. Like, I think, you know, that's all going to affect that somehow, but still <clears throat> it would be kind of fun just to, you know, pay attention to how dry it is and what, you know, what the foliage is around the area, I, you know, just to, so that way, cause all that matters one way or the another where the animals are, are at. And it's not that I've ever really paid attention, but it's just, you know, like something I want to, I'd like to get better at and understand a, a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah, my favorite uh my favorite quote though whenever I'm talking to fellow hunters is I really got it a lot when in, during an archery season. I can't say I got it so much like in rifle seasons, but in archery season whenever they're like, "Oh, everybody's saying they're up in the high elevation." And I'm sitting there like as far as I know, I'm in the highest elevation I could be. How much higher can we get? <laughs> right and then you look around and then like the next mountain range is like 100 miles from where you're at it's like there's no way they're traveling 100 yeah, miles yeah. to get there yeah well that's the other thing too is instead of coffee shop talk about how they're in the higher elevation why ain't they in the higher elevation themselves getting their elk you know what i mean right yeah i mean i mean it's something to think about right right for sure so um, we're just us talking about elevations and stuff it just every time every time i came across a fellow hunter because it happened a few times and every time i kind of look at him you know and obviously i was just i'm nice and be like oh yeah no totally they're up in higher elevation but i'm sitting there like looking at my onyx and going i don't know how much higher <laughs> i can get on this mountain i think i'm pretty much topped out <laughs> right <laughs> and i'm like what whatever <laughs> so i'm like what i'm gonna go 200 feet higher i mean that's you know yeah it's about as high as i can go you know i mean i guess i can make all the difference but i would say you know 200 feet higher is only a couple hundred yards away from me or you know and so i yeah. don't know it just it just kind of cracked me up just kind of yeah like i said if it if that's where they all are why isn't everybody else up there you know, right down at the coffee shop telling everybody that they're at higher elevation <laughs> i'm like well why ain't they up there then so True. i don't know i like i i just i just think that stuff's kind of funny but but yeah man i don't know turkey i guess they're up in the higher elevation this year so <laughs> gonna go up there no i'm just yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah no we need to i need to get with you and, and uh back to turkeys and because i've said you know i've i have seen turkeys out here i've sent you a couple pins over the, the last couple of years we need to probably just probably sit down and see where the closest uh public property is to where we where i've seen turkeys and and maybe go from there too i don't know that that's or if it's even worth it you know yeah i don't know it's yeah i uh yeah i uh i would like to actually go where you uh you've been a few times and and uh see what that if there if we can get on some because i think we're you sent me a couple of those pins were either right on or pretty close yeah. to public th or uh private i think well a majority of them were on private property but i don't know i feel like there's always with onyx hopefully you can find somewhere to slip into and and be able to hunt legally without getting in trouble that is that is one of the hardest things is that at the finding access sometimes right to uh what you want to hunt yeah because it I don't know. Sometimes like there's some locations, there's some locations that, uh, they like, man, I would, I would love to, like, it just feels like you're doing something wrong. If you, you know, like public might be right there, but you kind of feel like you're doing something wrong if you go into it. Cause it's so close, like the way the private sets on it, you know, it just feels like you might be crossing private to get to it. Right. Right. So, Especially out here in Colorado, it seems like people have property everywhere sometimes. Yeah, 
it does seem that way. <laughs> I want to say I I'll, I'll have to show you whenever we get together. Uh, I want to say that there's a few squares that I've I've spotted up looking on Onyx where there's private all the way around, and then there's this, this like square <laughs> of uh, property that, that's public. But I'm like, there's it's untouched because it's all surrounded by private. I, I mean, unless you're one of the private land owners, I guess. But you might as well just consider that private land you know for the private right landowners so it's just kind of kind of interesting how uh i mean I, I feel like at that point they might as well just give it up and and uh give it to give it kind of just <laughs> sell it off to the private landowners right no uh, we can't it's public property it's there for yeah, us <laughs> yeah yeah well yeah. that's true that's true <laughs> no, what? Well, yeah, what we need to do is figure out an access point and go that route. Right, right. Um, I was trying to think we we were going to kind of keep it short tonight, so I was kind of thinking of like a one last little little question in the in the hunting shack tonight. Um, and I was just gonna like my my mind just kind of goes went to like being mentally ready, and I was gonna say mentally ready to hunt elk this year. Um, because I know it's still far away, but at the same time, like, you know, it's like, I feel like you got to get yourself prepped up to be ready to, you know, and so that entails a whole lot. But then I was like, oh, turkey season's here. Is you, you mentally ready for turkey hunting? <laughs> I don't turkey. even know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think kind of being a little more prepared and I'll be honest this year, I'm, I've really lacked on preparing myself. Um, I'm probably, I'm actually, I feel like I'll, I'll do, I'll say it this way is I feel like I'm more elk ready than I am turkey ready. Cause, uh, I have a pretty good feeling for elk season this year. I feel like I found some good area this year where I was at, or this last year, I should say, uh, where I was elk hunting and, and, uh, right now in the plan books unless something changes i'm kind of planning on going right back there and seeing what i can accomplish see if i can finish the the task at hand because i was pretty close last year and um i think with a few adjustments and stuff i think i can i can get where i need to be and and hopefully hopefully get me an elk so um so yeah i'm probably more prepared for elk season than i am turkey but <laughs> But I'm feeling good about turkey, though. You know, I feel like I have a pretty good shot at trying to get one. So, yeah. we'll see what happens. Yeah, I'm I'm excited. I I can't wait for the for next month, and I can kind of just focus a little bit. If you haven't, I'm hoping you get something in April, the first part of the the turkey season. But uh, if you don't, I'm hopefully you know yes. I'm excited for May to to get here and. I can just devote a little bit more time. So I'm, I guess I'm mentally happy for this Turkey season, but I don't know if I'm really mentally prepared. For yeah. It. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I feel the same way. And, you know, a part of me, I mean, I'm definitely going to go out and I'm going to try. And I, I mean, I feel like I've said this in a couple of different ways, this podcast, but um, yeah, I'm kind of more excited to just be able to, you know, now that you're, over here in Colorado and stuff, kind of, kind of just taking it easy for the next few weekends until you can get out there with me and then, and then kind of focus and hit it hard. Just, just cause I want to hunt with you and stuff. So, right. Uh, right. So, yeah, but you know, in, in, in the meantime, hopefully find some good area and go from there. And like I said, if something happens to go my way, I'll take my, take my chance. But if it doesn't, then, just more more fun for us to have together and maybe make some some content for the struggling hunters and have some right. good stories we always seem to come back with good stories true true yeah yeah well i think so that's kind of the closing the door i think for the hunting shack tonight um and, I, and i'll i don't have anything else that i think i i want to go over tonight we kind of kind of hit everything and the apologize if i sound a little tired 
or not as quite as spunky as I maybe am at some other nights, but uh, you know, it's, as Eric said before, you know, we do this in our spare time and we enjoy doing it. That's why we do it when we're tired. So it, thanks for listening. And I, I don't know, I guess, Eric, I'll let you do what you know. I'm uh, killing it over here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you were going to close us out there for a second. I was going to roll with it, but I'll close this out, guys. Uh, uh, like Joe was saying, you know, some nights uh, we do do this at night uh, in the middle of the week. So with that said, you know, sometimes we are, we get on, you know, and work has kicked their butt or life in general, Joe in the middle of moving. I know, I know he's been pretty tired and I think it's catching up to him, um, you know, and, and, and it's not over yet. He's still got, he still has a lot of moving left, but with that said, um, yeah, it kicks our butt sometimes to do this at night, but we appreciate you guys uh, sticking there in there you know, coming into the hunting shack with us and, and, uh, listening to the podcast with us. And for that, you know, we, we really thank you guys for, for all your support. And, uh, with that support, you know, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, please, uh, go ahead and give it a like. If you, uh, you know, if you're not subscribed, subscribe and, uh, go check us out on our podcast platforms too. Um, Sometimes I think it's easier to listen to us than to see our ugly mugs on, <laughs> on the screen. So, so uh, go check us out over there and, and uh, thanks for listening guys. It's been a, another great week with the struggling hunters and we are out. Take care guys. Be safe out there. Turkey hunting.